So traditionally, scientists tend to treat autistic people as subjects in an experiment, and they just see them as people to be measured, come in the lab, you know, measure something about them for 30 minutes, send them home, and maybe a couple years later, send them a copy of a paper published that averaged their data in with others. Um, it's not quite that course, but, but that's pretty much um, the way that kind of thing happens. Um, we're trying to do this very differently. We're trying to involve them in the design process of technologies that would not just measure, but would help them communicate. So we want their input from the beginning on what's comfortable, who do they want to communicate to, how do they want to control this. And we're dealing with people who are often unable to speak. So this is a challenge to co-design this with them. But, but it's, it's really rewarding to do this and to get their feedback. And for example, uh, we've been surprised. Uh, we, we kept trying to make it smaller and thinner and lighter. And one older autistic man came in and he said, can you make it bigger and more pressure? That would feel better. And it was the exact opposite of the way we were thinking, but that was more comforting for him. And in fact, that turns out to be comforting for a lot of people on the autism spectrum.